Hi, this is Matt McIntosh and in this video uh, I'm going to be going over the steps for creating 3D assets. So step one, uh, you need to be concepting your characters or your creatures. So as you can see from this slide, I've got three examples. One's pretty rough, which is uh, just colours and stuff. Number two is uh, taken from silhouettes, a little bit more definition put in there. Uh, but three has far more kind of shading and stuff uh, uh, associated to it. You don't have to put in loads and loads of detail, but it helps when you come to step two, which is the sculpting process. So as you can see from this one, um, I've got a number of sub tools that all have uh, various elements of detail uh, associated to the character. Um, so I'm going to focus on the feet uh, for the moment. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, this version doesn't actually have any color information on it, um, but there's nothing stopping you making colored versions of your uh, creations within ZBrush at this stage. Um, and if you do it right, you can make interchangeable elements such as um, different um, toe caps, for example, on a boot to give it a different sort of uh, appearance. So if I just switch between those two, there you go. Okay, so that's that's the coloured version. The next thing that you should be looking at doing is uh, retopping that. So whether you decimate it, whether you retop it in um, ZBrush, I've personally uh, decimated this. I've uh, topped it to 18,000 polys. I've taken it into Silo um, and I've made the retopology there. Um, if you do this in segments, you can swap parts out as and how you need them. Um, and that way it will make your life a little bit easier when you start to come to make various parts for your, uh, your characters. Step four then, um, you should be looking at mapping your character. So on this, the whole character is ma um, mapped already apart from this foot. So uh, I'll just zoom in on this and you can see that there is some kind of uh, predetermined split that I've already cut into this. So if you were doing pelt mapping, it's the same effect. Um, I'm just using a, a program called Headers UV Layout, which is far quicker at, at laying things out flat. And as you can see, anything that's red is too small. Anything that's blue is a little bit too big. Um, anything that's green is the ideal shape. So as you can see from this, most of the characters are pretty much ideal. And I'm just letting the uh, program pack everything into the one to zero square so I can work with it in a decent fashion. So it all fits in there. Okay, so uh, you'd save that out and you'd either take it into uh, ZBrush or X Normals. So I'm going to show you the um, retopology in ZBrush here. So this is creating the textures. Um, the important thing to bear in mind is that the retopology needs to sit exactly over the top of the original piece. Now there's a bit of uh, difference between the head on this one and the high res, but I'm making swappable heads. Um, so what I need to do is um, export those out um, so that I can kind of use them in um, X normals. So I'm going to demonstrate this with a, uh, a boot. Um, actually, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you this process within ZBrush. So if I've got the low poly version of the boot and the high color boot, uh, version of the boot, I'm going to divide them so that I've got a decent amount of polys on, on the boot. Then I'm going to project that information so that it captures the high res color information. And because it's got mapping coordinates, it should transfer across into the appropriate positions. Um, but this isn't a kind of guaranteed process. You can get errors um, because of the various layers of um, sub tools that have been created uh, to produce your objects. So for example, on this boot, um, if I just hide the high res, yeah, you can see it quite clearly on this. I've got bits that haven't picked up properly or they're uh, fighting with each other as to which one gets um, the priority within ZBrush. 
So either go through your model and delete off sections that you can't see or um, use a different approach. But I will show you how you can get the texture map out of the uh, ZBrush. So you go to create, new from polypaint, and it will create your color information um, in the appropriate UV place. And similarly with the normal map, but you need to be on the lowest setting for this or the lowest division. Um, you click on normal map, create normal map, and one pops up and there you go. The other option though is to use X normals and I would recommend this. So what you need to do is take your high res mesh, export it out. So if we go to X normals, uh, make sure you get your high def um, selection there. So I want the colored boot. Okay. Now what I need to do is import in a low mesh. So I need to select my retopologized UV version and export that out. And load that into here, so low boot. And then what I need to do is bake the information that I'm after. So I'm, I can choose from insane uh, map sizes. I'm going to leave it at 512 and I'm just going to call it test and save that as a target. Um, what I need is the normal map. So I'm going to turn that on, ambient occlusion, and then it, just click on generate. And what it will do is compare the two meshes so that basically um, it will create those maps for you. It takes a little while to do it. Um, and as you can see, I've got the ambient occlusion there. Um, before I have a look at those maps, I'm just going to go back to my high def uh, mesh, turn off the ignore pre, uh, pre, per vertex color, um, go to baking options, turn off ambient occlusion, normal map, and go to where it says big high poly vertex colors. Click on generate, and that should give me um, any color information from ZBrush as a texture. So once this is loaded, I'll pop into uh, Photoshop, and you can see, I'll just load those images up that I've just uh, created. Yeah, if I load these three images up, you can see I've got the color information, I've got the ambient occlusion, and I've got the normal map. So um, finishing off, what you should be doing is taking your low res into either Max or um, you know something like um, Mindset Toolbag, loading your normal map into that information or onto that mesh even, loading your ambient occlusion on. Um, if you're doing it the old way. Um, just use that for kind of uh, highlighting your uh, diffuse map. If you're doing it the new way, then there will be a specific slot to plug that into. Um, but you also need your color map and uh, specularity. And as you can see from this, um, all I'm going to do is put on a turntable, uh, which is under camera and then um, animation. And I just start the camera or the scene rotating. And as you can see, it gives you a turntable. There is an option to put wireframes on it. So if you do it right, those are the steps it should take.